beautiful people welcome to another fun episode of Nanabes kitchen today i have pretzels on the menu the children have been bugging me to make them pretzels they miss out on going to the mall which is where we used to really indulge in some really good pretzels from auntie Anne's. now today i'm going to do some pretzels for them now so far we have put the dough together it's been about 30 minutes and it's almost doubled in size I also have some water um, on the stove. It's coming to a boil, and then we'll proceed from there. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up already if you're not subscribed. Also, do the same. Subscribe, hit that bell so you get notification of my next video. And we combine the following ingredients to form the dough, starting with the yeast, some salt, melted butter, powdered milk, some granulated sugar, and of course, we're combining all these ingredients with the flour, and this happens to be bread flour. However, you can use all-purpose flour without a problem. So we've whisked the flour just to loosen it up a bit, and now we're combining all the ingredients I've mentioned before, which would be your powdered milk, the salt, the yeast, the sugar, and what we're doing is just whisking them all together now to combine them. And then we're going to add some water to bring the dough together. And the kind of yeast being used today is dry active yeast and you can use instant yeast as well. So we're creating a well now and the dry ingredients that we've combined well and now we're incorporating our water. The water needs to be at room temperature. You cannot use cold water or ice cold water. It has to be at room temperature or slightly warm so where your skin can tolerate it, all right? Because the yeast will not work if the water is cold. It has to be warm or at room temperature. Now, when you add a little bit of the water, you're going to stir uh, the ingredients together to start forming gluten, and then add the butter. The butter is fat and it breaks the gluten. So you want to start forming gluten before you incorporate the butter because gluten is necessary in this recipe. You want your pretzels to be chewy and at the same time melt in your mouth. And then you can add the rest of the water after the batter has been incorporated to bring the dough completely together like so. And then you're going to need about five minutes on your clean working surface, all right? And then we'll let the dough sit, rest, and loosen the gluten so it's easier to work with. And then it will also prove at that time, we want it to double in size. That's what we're going for. Now, the proofing bowl will need to be greased. Today, I'm using butter, good old butter, because we want our pretzels to be buttery. All right, so smear your butter in there, coat your bowl nicely, and place your dough in there. Put a saran wrap on it and then a, a damp kitchen cloth and let it just sit on your kitchen counter. If you have a warm environment, it should double in size in about 30 minutes. All right, in the meantime, we have some toppings to work on. So I have some sugar and cinnamon powder. I also have some kosher salt or you can use your pretzel salt if you can get a hold of that. And we also have some pecans, which I have crushed. So I have added the cinnamon powder to the granulated sugar and whisking together to combine evenly. And then here is another topping, which we're going to make the original pretzel from. This is just kosher salt and it is coarse, all right? And here is our pecans. I was trying to mimic my favorite pretzel, which is the almond coated kind and i didn't have any almonds on hand but i had a whole lot of uh, pecans so i used that and it worked just fine so 30 minutes later here is our dough doubled in size now gently pour the dough onto your clean working surface and just let it hang out for about a minute all right, now our water has come to a boil we're going to prepare a baking soda and hot water solution in which we're going to be dipping our formed pretzels before they go into the oven. So here's the baking soda. And yes, it's supposed to bubble like this. Some effervescence action should occur. And whisk it together to combine evenly. All right, now this water is hot. So when you dip your formed pretzels in there, you ought to be careful. 
And back to the dough, you want to now spread it out. And what you want to get is a horizontal dough, okay? Flattened, deflated, and horizontal. When you have it in horizontal shape and it's long like that, you are able to easily cut out your dough to form your pretzels, just like so. And I'm just using a pizza cutter to do that. And it does the work very efficiently. All right, so now we have a long rope-like uh, dough cut out. I'm just going to roll it out slightly to get it as even as possible. And then you're going to lay it down to form a horseshoe. Then you're going to crisscross both ends twice, just like I have done. And then place both ends onto the base of the dough to form your classic and signature pretzel look just like so. Perfect, beautiful. Repeat that until all your pretzels have formed. And then we're going to start dipping them in the baking soda and water solution. So just drop it in there gently and carefully. You're going to use two spatulas to kind of submerge them and take them right out. You, you don't let them stay in there for too long, all right? So just for about three seconds or so and remove them, place them on your sheet pan. And the key here is to completely submerge them in the hot water and baking soda solution. So you want to kind of give them a baptism. Think about how hot it is in the oven. You want to prepare them mentally <laughs> to face that heat. <laughs> That's how I choose to look at these, all right? After that, you're going to coat them with uh, an egg wash. So I just had one egg, a drop of water in there, whisk it, and then coat them nicely with that. And that is actually going to give you a really nice glossy shine after they're done baking. And, and uh, we all know pretzels ought to look glossy and have that shine to them. And right after your egg wash, you're going to sprinkle your toppings onto it. So I have sprinkled the kosher salt and now I'm doing the same with my crushed pecans. And they're gonna go into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. So at the 15 minute mark, you want to open your oven, depending on what kind of oven you have, you really wanna check on these after 15 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Just look and see if you like the color, okay? All right, so the rest of the dough, I just roll them out into a long rope and I cut them into these little miniature bites, all right? So we're going to coat these when they're done baking in our cinnamon sugar. It's going to be amazing. Look at these, 15 minutes later. This is the color I'm going for, golden brown. So if you want them to be browner than that, then obviously you can let it stay in the oven for five more minutes. So like I said, at the 15 minute mark, just check and see if you like the color, but it should be done cooking at that time. Look at these gorgeous things. Yes, I cannot wait for these children to indulge. I am so proud of me right now. <laughs> and they look stunning too, don't they? So now I have some butter I have melted. The cream part of the butter is on the bottom, so the top part is clarified, and I'm using the clarified part to give them an even more shine, especially this plain one and the pecan coated one. Just look at that. How gorgeous are these? And just look at how soft these are. You know they're gonna melt in your mouth and you're still going to get that chew. Now you get that chew from dipping them in that baking soda and hot water solution. It also gives you that distinct pretzel taste, right? So you get that coating that tastes alkaline and that chewy outer layer. And you also get kind of a thin crust because the baking soda starts to break down the protein in the flour, which is what gives you that signature taste, look, and feel in your mouth. So these little bites have come out. I have coated them also with some of the clarified butter, and now they've been dipped in that cinnamon sugar. This is my son's favorite. Yes, my little boy Zawadi will do anything for you with these cinnamon mini bites and just take a look at that right here you can see the chew that's something all right now dip that into some homemade caramel sauce and my goodness unapologetic decadence purely
My beautiful ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the finale of our pretzel adventure. The children cannot wait to dig in. I hope that you're able to try your hands on this quick, easy, decadent recipe for your family. I know they'll be extremely grateful. Thank you for joining us today on another fun episode of Nanaba's Kitchen. Hope to see you soon very soon on my next one make it a great day friends and family and have fun especially in that kitchen you all know what time it is chop time for the children <laughs> yes children